Guys, do you know what really grinds my gears sometimes? Is when there's a movie or a show that has an amazing premise to it and a, an incredible setup and they do something so unique and so just fascinating, just amazing potential for an amazing, amazing story. And then they completely butcher it. All right, so early this year, I found this anime, which I've heard quite a bit about, called Worlds and Harem, which came out in 2021. So I was a little late to the party. The only complaint that I heard about it was that there was some censoring. And basically, instead of doing this, the same old, same old, either pixelated stuff, or you basically have this white glow covering certain parts. Instead, they basically had a lot of black pixels covering everything and they didn't even bother to make it look neat It wasn't like there was big black squares or anything It was just these random pixels as if they went into word art took their pen and basically just did this over all the culture moments But that's not the part that really annoys me The part that annoys me is exactly as I said in this video because basically I want to talk to you about how you can set up a great world building and then just mess up with the story and I think what it really comes down to is when you give a setup, but you don't follow through with it and you don't logically think about how making these settings can change how the world naturally works. So basically what happens in Worlds and Harem is we get introduced to a character. I can't remember any of their names. I don't really care, but we basically get introduced to this guy who has a very rare disease. And at this current moment in time, there isn't a cure for this disease. So what they do is they submerge him in some sort of water or liquid or something like that and the idea is that he's going to wake up in five years time and hopefully in five years time there will be a cure for this disease so this character goes underwater and he says goodbye to like his sister his family his girlfriend etc he wakes up five years into the future every single man on earth has died well every man ex except we find out that there's like this guy and like four other dudes that managed to survive so basically just those five but all the other guys all the other males on the planet have all died over the last five years through the course of a virus and this is interesting because what the government then decides to do which again is all women at this point so they take extra extra care to make sure that this character that this guy is very healthy and well protected and there's a moment where the guy's like hey i want to go outside i want to see what's going on so he goes into the streets and there's these mobs of women and it's like oh come with me come with me like i want to bury your child and all this kind of stuff because there's this real desperate attempt where we got to keep having children and offspring and stuff like that in order to maintain civilization otherwise everything's just going to die out and the government int introduces a program where they basically want them to mate now, of course, this is anime, so there's a lot of cultured moments, lots of meeting that they're trying to encourage. It was just the premise. I was like, wow, this is fascinating. Like, like seriously, just take a moment and imagine the world that we live in, but all the guys are dead. And how does that change the world? How does that impact our society? And the government has also said that if there's a woman that does carry an offspring. They're gonna get special treatment and special care compared to everyone else that doesn't really get those special privileges. That's also a reason why everyone is so desperate to wanna to have kids and mate with these guys so that they can also get special treatment too. And they get all these women together, all these girls to, they're all volunteers, so they say. They basically play bachelor where it's like, okay, dude you stand here there's like 30 women here which one of them do you want to make out with that's literally what it comes down to the part that ruined it for me though was as you go along with the show they just really want the cultured moments lots and lots of culture moments and we're going to talk about that more in a moment there's a quite a few bit of problems with this so one of the characters we get introduced to he was bullied in i want to say his previous life but basically before he went into submerge he was bullied a lot so he woke up and he's quite nervous he's not sure what's going on but then he slowly becomes comfortable with the idea that hey i can mate whenever i want like i can basically have sex whenever i want this is awesome and at first he's like oh this is great this is awesome like all these girls they want to have sex with me this is great i'm having fun but then as the show progresses he starts to take things a little too far and he's like yo i can have sex whenever i want i can have sex in the bathroom i can have sex in the kitchen i can have as many girls in my dorm as i want i have sex in the classroom i have sex in the pool i have sex whenever i want the part that really took it too far for me was that this kid found out that the bullies which were primarily guys you know they all died off but but one of the bullies was a girl and she's obviously around she survived and so they locate this girl 
and they give the kid permission to torture her however he sees fit. And this is the part where I started to lose it because, okay, let's look at this world building and let's think about this logically. Okay, so again, let's just imagine we're living in society that we know today and all the men are dead except for like four of them. So, okay. So what's the first primary problem that we get introduced? Well, the first problem is the fact that, you know, because all the guys are gone, we need to continue the generation because if we only have women, we're not going to be able to continue having kids. So the first priority, the number one priority is how can we continue having offspring? How can we resolve this problem? Well, I mean, the first thing to look at is there are what are called sperm banks and those things do exist today. So I'm sure there's going to be lots of sperm banks somewhere. At first you might be thinking, well, you know, it makes sense that you have these guys and you know, they should be mating with all these girls. Well, here's where I see the problem in this. And this is where the culture of this anime takes uh, goes a little too far because the thing that the show forgets, the thing that the storytellers forget are the repercussions that happen after this. And I know sometimes we don't think about the repercussions. It's an anime, but think about this. So you have these 20 or 30 women who are degraded and being sexualized in order to seduce these men. You have these girls who are volunteering to essentially become prostitutes. Isn't that being inhumane sometimes? Why not instead of having these guys, you know, mate with every girl they see, why don't they just contribute to a sperm bag? Like there are machines that do that. Yeah, it's gonna be a heck of a lot of fun, I'm sure. But basically that's all these guys do. They're in their private dorms and all they do is they just contribute to the sperm bank for lack of a better term. I'm really hoping that YouTube doesn't take this down, but that's a way how you have these guys that can continuously contribute and no one gets degraded. These women are treated with respect. There isn't anything inappropriate happening. And that way we can solve that problem. Because again, going back to, so you have these girls that are being degraded and sexualized and stuff like that. So that's a problem. Like, let's say the problem gets resolved. Let's say we are able to have kids and it's like, okay, civilization seems to be going back on track and we seem to be just fine. Well, thinking about these girls, like they're going to continue for the rest of their lives, knowing that they were a part of basically being a prostitute. Like that's not going to be something you're proud of. Is that really what your government should be backing up? Is that really like the government you want to support? And also think about when this kid who found the girl who bullied him, like revenge is never a pretty thing, but you're telling me that the government is allowing this guy to do whatever he wants to this girl, torturing her, being inhumane. Like it does go pretty far at times. Like I know that all the guys are gone and it's mainly just the women, but that doesn't mean that we lose our morality. That doesn't mean we can't look at this through logic and look at the best way we can resolve the situation. Because I don't think this is the best way we've resolved the situation at all. You know, there's even a moment, so our main character that woke up, so he goes on this long journey where he can't find his girlfriend and he's trying to track her down. The government is like, we want you to mate so that we can continue to have kids. And he's like, she's the only one I want to mate with, or at least let me mate with her first. She's the first person I want to be, I want to mate with because I love her so much. And then I'll mate with everyone else. If we had like machines and sperm banks and stuff like that, then, morally if you want to have that intimacy with your girlfriend if you want to have that special relationship with your girlfriend that's fine like contribute to a machine contributing to the sperm bank isn't going to degrade that whatsoever it's not going to take anything away so we're going back to trying to find the most moral way to solve the problem and instead what ends up happening is you have several of these other guys who have lots of these other girls that they just make out with every single night or several times in the day or whatever. And that's all it is, is just, it basically turns into like a whole prostitute factory essentially. So that's why it really just took me out of the story. And that was the part that really annoyed me. I know a lot of people, again, as I said, were really annoyed with the pixelations and the really weird sensory going on. I don't really care. I usually watch the censor versions anyways. I'm not all for the culture. It was the story that really, really bugged me. See, world building is a lot of fun. World building can do so much for your story. And I know a lot of people when they think about world building as something that you associate with fantasy and sci-fi because you're creating this new world. But to me, that's not what world building is. World building is simply just establishing the world that your characters live in. They can be living in a modern society. 
and that's still world building. But basically what you're doing is you're establishing that yes, we're in a modern society, but what are the ground rules? What are the situations that your characters have to deal with? Even if it's in a sci-fi or a fantasy universe, you could have a fantasy universe where there's dragons. That's something that we establish in the world building. So your character has to deal with their regular everyday life and keep them back in their mind that there's dragons out there. So they gotta be extra careful. You could be dealing with a sci-fi universe where there are people with big glowy sticks that can chop you down. Okay, well, I'm gonna continue you know, trying to live out my life, but be careful that there's these force bending, glow stick wielding sword people in bathrobes. You could be dealing with society where there's transportation. You go and you transport from one place to another like they do in Star Trek, for instance, like beam me up Scotty and stuff. Or maybe it's just a modern society where in this, maybe your character lives in a town or a village where they believe that the color green is considered evil or something, I don't know. So in that case, all green is considered bad. So when you have a society where they believe that the color green is bad, how does that affect your world? So you see how just by making these little tweaks, it will change the world and not just change the world, but how your characters live in that world. Because if you have these rules introduced into your society, your characters will not, and I repeat, they will not be living out their life the same way you and I do, because you and I don't have to deal with these rules. But as soon as you introduce these new rules, then you gotta really think about how are these characters living in this society and what are the new challenges that come with it? Think about, we live in a modern society and let's say all the men are gone what are the challenges what are the main concerns how can we deal with us using modern day problems and dealing with it in a moral way so really be careful about the world building that's, that you're setting up and my biggest suggestion is keep it simple and again really think about okay what are the significant rules and the significant things to think about in this society that's going to affect your characters and overall affect your story because then you're not going to make the same mistake as world's end harem good luck with your writing guys please like and subscribe as always and i will see you next time